Brad Gray of Racing New South Wales, former analyst for them, has joined us on the phone. What conditions do you expect will present? Obviously a heavy track, uh, Brad, but how do you think the track will play? Yeah, good morning, Jason. It's, a, it's an interesting one because we caught so much rain last night, as you alluded to, a good, a good dumping there was at 21 mils overnight. So the track yesterday was a, was a good deck, and now we wake up this morning and we're playing on a heavy. It's a, a steamy day out there, forecasters for, for Warwick Farmers, it quite often is, so 33 degrees, so it should be a good drying day. When they race on a wet track at Warwick Farm, they tend to come off the fence. Uh, that's generally the pattern with a lot of tracks especially in New South Wales. I imagine that'd be, that'd be similar. So you probably want to be getting off the fence and coming down the middle of the track. But as I say, these conditions probably lend themselves to a potential upgrade or two as we get later into the car. So fingers crossed for that. OK, it'll be a watch the space scenario. Race number five, the million dollar English sprint. Is it, is it a two-horse race, as the market suggests, between Esther Jarb and Fiesta? I don't think it's as simple as that, although the ratings do suggest that. Um, you, you look at how well these horses are placed, given their benchmark ratings. It's a, a set weights race, and they are head and shoulders above the rest. But the heavy track throws a little spanner in the works. And I guess the query over Esther Jarb, although so well placed here, is she's had a long time off. She's had a, a well-publicised tie-back operation. And it's been a bit of a tumultuous preparation because she actually dumped the jockey, Brenton Adbala, in her one trial. So it was hard to get a gauge exactly how well she's going. She's been very easy in the market so far and I do expect that drift to continue. Fiesta is a money horse. You can see why. She's just so honest. I think she'll be really hard to beat. But if you're looking outside of those two, I think you can throw Coterie into the mix for Gerald Ryan. Now, this horse is one that's coming through the grades. He has yet to do it against horses that were spoken about like Yerissa Jobs or Fiestas. But his trial was absolutely outstanding. Uh, his latest one where he really hit the line, he put Hugh Bowman riding. Uh, I think as a horse on the up. He's proven on the wet tracks. So I think he'll run a bit of a race at around $12. But no denying the Fiesta is probably the horse to beat. At the uh, top of the market for the uh, Inglis Millennium, uh, worth uh, $2 million, you've got a session and also Dawn Passage. They're at two ninety and two dollars and sixty cents. I suppose a repeat question uh, from race number five: uh, d Do they dominate the races the market suggests? Yeah, this is a good race, isn't it? Two million dollars is the first running of it. Really rich race, so good money for the for the English horses going around at Warwick Farm. I I think it is. Uh, I really do think it is. I'm heavily in the corner of Dawn Passage. I think we're going to watch a, a replay of his, his first up win. That was actually on debut when he was just so dominant here. Couldn't have been any more impressive. There was really good speed up front, which certainly played into his hands, but he just put a cap on his rivals. He comes home his last 600 metres in 33.02. That was the fastest split of the entire day of that last 600 metres and, and really quick time. So I think he's the one with the with plenty of upside. Uh, 1,200 metres looks ideal now. He's by Dawn Approach, so he shouldn't really be doing what he's doing over these sprint trips. So I think he'll chuck it in behind the field here. Uh, and again, in a race that looks pretty genuine tempo up front, be ripping home. You're not used to seeing Gay Wardhouse and Adrian Bott train horses sit in behind, uh, but that's his pattern, and he looks like a, a nice animal. The query with accession, although really dominant last star, was just the times. I know times aren't everything, but they're a pretty important piece of the puzzle, so it'd be interesting to see if he keeps raising the bar, because he does keep doing that. But yeah, a little query for me around around the times he's running and the opposition he's beating. So I'm firmly in the, in the corner of Dawn Passage, race seven, uh, in number two. To be ridden by Blake, I got Tom Melbourne to win Shin, who has returned from injury in great style. OK, that's one of your bets of the day. What's your best? Uh, best is she knows. Race three, you think you're shopping around each dollar, each way quote at the moment, around the $5 mark. Denny Williams, trained sprinter. I uh, love how this race sets up for this mare from Barrier 1. Again, Hugh Bowman, so hopefully Hughie can have a big day. Of course, he was out there riding Winks this morning. Hopefully he's nice and warmed up. For this afternoon, it's interesting this the way this race sets up because Super 2 is a horse that goes 100 miles an hour and you can quite often fall into the trap of thinking races like this will be suited for the back markers, but often those that get so far out of their ground have just got too much work to do. So you're looking at that horse just stalking the, the pace and I think that is she knows. Third back the fence, ready to pounce and the rain around certainly helps her. So I think she'll run a, a big race there for us at, at around the $5 mark. That's race three, number four.